Uh, good morning. Welcome. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think a big part of what I'm going to talk about is the future, uh, at least as we see it in particular around the future of work and, and what we call workplace as a service, actually not space as a service. Um, but I think the general theme today is really about the future and disruption and what we're seeing in the market. So before I talk about the future, I always like talking about the present. So real quick, show of hands. Who has a smartphone? OK. <laughs> Uh, show of hands, who uses Amazon? All right, show of hands, who uses Airbnb? If I told you a decade ago that your life would be in your pocket, that you could get everything you ever needed without leaving your apartment or your home, that you would sleep in a random's bed, or even worse, you would let a random sleep in yours, <laughs> would anyone have believed me? No. Um, and what's, what, what that says to me is if we just stop today and pause and look at what's happened just in the past 10 years, none of those things I just mentioned were even possible. And so there's no question that technology uh, is not just changing the way that we live, uh, the way that we socialize, the way that we consume information, but it's also having a really big impact on the way that we actually physically work. Um, what we know today is that the way that people work and the way that companies ut utilize real estate has changed forever. And the real question isn't, what does that mean today? It's really, well, why is that happening? And what I'd like to do is actually um, zoom out a little bit. And one of the things we talk about at, at Convene is, and, and Bill Clinton has a great quote, he says, ignore the headlines, focus on the trend lines. The headline is disruption, the headline is co-working, the headline is fear, geopolitical risk, right? If, if those are the headlines, but the real question is, well, what is the actual trend line? What is driving these ch changes that are happening around us, not just in our businesses, but in society as a whole? Um, Steve Jobs used to practice something called zoom in, zoom out, he made it famous. Uh, and what I'd like to do is zoom out and really talk about trends. So PwC published this report, um, I think the first time was in 2005. Uh, they updated about every, I think almost every year at this point in time. And what they identified was the five global mega trends that was gonna change the way that we worked, the way that we lived, the way that societies operate, not just for five years or 10 years, but literally for the next 50 years. And what you're seeing is these top five. So the first is demographics, right? So today, 50% of the workforce is defined as millennial. Millennials today are the largest, have the most purchasing power out of any generation today. By 2025, 75% of the workforce will be defined as millennial. In addition, in 2015, it was the first time that workers over the age of 65 outnumbered teenage workers. The last time that happened was in 1948. So if you put yourselves in the shoes of a CEO, imagine de designing not just a workplace strategy, but a cultural strategy for five generations in the same workforce at the same time with a unique set of tastes, preferences, expectations. Technology. Um, I don't think we have to talk a lot about that, and I think that's going to be a key theme uh, today. But what is interesting is how ubiquitous technology is becoming, in particular from a mobile perspective. So by 2020, there'll be 50 billion connected devices globally. In 2003, there was 500 million. So the question we should be asking ourselves is, what happens to our built world when every single thing is connected to the network and the internet? Uh, urbanization, again, major trend. 50% of the world's population today lives in urban areas. One and a half million people a week globally move to a city. Today, 70% of global GDP is produced out of urban MSAs globally. So we can't underestimate the power and impact that urbanization is having. Uh, resources. Um, by 2030, PwC predicts that there will be 8.3 billion people living on this earth. We need 50% more energy, 40% more food, 30% more clean drinking water. The next world war will most likely be over natural resources or clean drinking water. Uh, and then the last thing is globalization. 
which to some extent we're seeing Western countries starting to fight globalization and, and lead towards a more is isolationist mindset. But the reality is globalization is a trend that's not gonna stop in particular because of technology. We've democratized access to information, right? Um, globalization by 2030, the emerging seven, will have more global purchasing power than the existing G7. And what's interesting is what happens when the economic power shifts away from those that have today, mainly Western nations, to emerging countries. And what does that mean for the way that we work, the way that we live? Uh, and what does that mean for society more broadly? Um, what we're seeing is that all of this change from these trends is that Moore's Law, everyone familiar with Moore's Law? Um, no, so uh, Moore's Law uh, came about in the, uh, in the chip industry. And what Moore's Law was defining was that every two years, the storage capacity of a chip was increasing by 2x, but the price point was decreasing by half. And if you do that every two years, what you start to see is an exponential curve, okay? Um, a great book that everyone should read, Thomas Friedman, uh, Thank You for Being Late. Uh, and what he says is that in today's information age, that Moore's Law it actually applies to everything. And what he calls it is this age of accelerations. So let's zoom in for a second, really start to focus on well, what does that mean for the way that people work? Um, what we know is that in today's age of accelerations, right, you talk to any CEO, human capital is a company's most valuable resource. We also know that there's a big problem. That while the way companies utilize, utilize real estate has changed and the way that we work has changed, the workplace actually isn't built for the needs of today's top companies and their talent. That is the underlying problem. And what we're seeing is, is what I call the rise of the agile workforce, right? And let's go back to those, those, those mega trends. Changes in technology plus changing demographics equals new and evolving industries. New and evolving industries work differently. No better example of agile working than we work, right? Space as a service company, Worth 22 billion last time I checked. You know, who knows? SoftBank might pump in another 10 and they'll be worth 40. I have no idea. Um, but to me, what, what that is showing is that fundamentally, the way that the office space sector is going to be consumed on a go for basis has, has fundamentally changed. What we also know, at least at Convene, what we believe is that you know, co working is just the first step in a much larger CRE industry shift that's playing out right now. Uh, and this kind of gets back to that, don't focus on the headline, focus on the trend line. Um, and what we know is that 67% of businesses globally are now choosing forms of flexible workspace as a permanent part of their strategy, not a temporary solution. And the biggest change that we've seen in Convene in the conversations that we're having, especially with large enterprise, is 12 to 24 months ago when we were sitting with JP Morgan or PwC or Google or Airbnb, they were using companies like Convene and WeWork and others as a temporary solution until they found their own space. What I can tell you is in the last 12 months that conversation has changed meaningfully. And every one of those companies and every one of our large enterprise clients of which 80% you know, of our revenue comes from Fortune 1000 companies, all of them are now talking about a committed long-term strategy to outsource real estate as a, as a fundamental part of the way that they're not gonna just optimize their real estate, but really drive a talent strategy at the corporate level. Because space matters. The workplace experience matters. Um, based on that, JLL is now predicting that 30% of all commercial office space will be consumed as flexible by 2030. Does anyone know what that number is today in the United States? More or less than 3%. Less, it's 2.7%. So what JLL is telling us is that within the next 10, 12, 13 years, that 2.7% number is gonna increase by 10X. To me, that is back to the Moore's Law thing, right? Uh, what we also know is that choice, flexibility, and experience at work are now more important to millennials than all other factors, including pay. That is a generational shift in what a generation values from the work that they do on a daily basis. 
Um, what we also know at Convene is that, and, and like to say, is that in a customer-centric world, things that don't make sense get disrupted. In my opinion, signing a 10-year lease, regardless of what company size you are, when you have no clue where your business is gonna be 24 months from now, makes absolutely no sense. Walking into the same office building to visit a client for the 50th time, not the first time, and have to go through the exact same security process in the lobby of that building makes absolutely no sense. That has to change. And what we're seeing is that legacy industries, right, are starting to evolve. And we say they're evolving from space to experience. And here's some examples of industries, right, that have been transformed by technology-enabled businesses. Um, some of these businesses, like Convene, more space-oriented and Equinox, and others more digitally driven. And what we've identified is that the real estate industry is going through a form factor change, a paradigm shift, where it is now entering the era of tenant centricity, right? In a former life, I bought and sold buildings, office buildings and hotels. If you asked me when I was doing that who my client was, I would not tell you it was the tenant in our building, and I sure wouldn't tell you it was the employee of the tenant in the building. I would tell you it was the capital markets. That is changing today fundamentally. Where every landlord today now can't just think about the credit worthiness of the tenant, or should I renovate the lobby or not, they actually have to fundamentally think different about human experience in the building, and how can I create a differentiated experience in the building through space, services, and technology. Um, and what we like to say is what talent wants is what companies need, and what landlords plus companies like Convene ultimately must build. Uh, and what you'll see at Convene is what we call work, a workplace hospitality platform. Uh, and what we're doing is reimagining what the experience in an office building is by creating flexible space. So we're in a meeting space today that's in a building. Um, we've evolved our product offering to include things like flexible workspace and hospitality amenities in partnership with landlords. And what we started to do is really reimagine the way that an office building is run from being just an office building to operating more like a full service lifestyle hotel. Where you could think about hotel rooms being removed and replaced by desks. And the hospitality infrastructure that's creating this experience can also be leveraged to deliver a hospitality experience vertically in the building. None of that happens without technology. What we know is that our future workspaces will not just be desks that we go to or seats that we sit in, but actually places that we are inspired to be in, right? And, and that's not just because it's the right thing to do, it is being demanded by a new generation of worker. I can't tell you how many people that come to work for Convene, how our workspace design is, what services we're offering, what benefits we're offering, how important those things are in their decision whether or not to work for Convene. It's pretty much that and our glass door ratings. Like, I can't tell you, everybody I interview now is going to Glassdoor and saying, oh, by the way, do you know your CEO rating is XYZ? Do you know you guys are ranked actually? I actually want to work for you as a company because you care about your people. Um, so one of the things I like to do in, in, uh, in the spirit of today uh, and disruption is really talk about what are our five bold predictions, not just for the future of work, but really for what I would call space as a service or the workplace as a service industry. Um, so prediction number one, uh, by 2030, the world's largest landlord will own no assets. The largest hotel year in the world today owns no hotel inventory. The world's largest transportation company does not own a single vehicle. The world's largest retailer has very few stores. Um, and so it, to us, it would be natural that in a world where sharing is the economic and social model of the 21st century, that this should happen. And here's some examples of just adoption within sharing economy. Prediction number two, all office buildings will be smart buildings. And the reason we say this is back to the stat that we talked about. By 2020, there will be 50 billion connected devices to the internet. In five to 10 years, if anyone's talking or hearing about IoT, which I'm assuming everyone in this room is, Everything around us will be connected to the internet. And what will start to happen is that that data sets and that intelligence that's coming from our chairs, our lights, our sensors, 
we'll start to be able to better anticipate the human needs that we have in our built environments, whether that's where we live, whether that's the hotels we stay in, or the places ultimately that we work. Prediction number three, third places. Things like Starbucks, things like WeWork, places like Convene, will become the number one preferred workspace category. And why do we think that? Well, because that's what the data is telling us. 65% of office workers today say they would be more productive working outside of their traditional office environment. So if you're the CEO of a company and you're focused on engagement and productivity, if more than half of your people are telling you they're more productive out of the office, should you not be thinking about a mobile strategy or a mobility strategy? Of course you should. Uh, prediction number four, the majority of Fortune 500 companies will not hold long-term leases. For the brokers in the room, I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> By the way, these are just predictions. None of this stuff might happen, okay? Uh, and why do we say that? Um, well, for us, it's, it's, it's ex human experience, but then it's also about utilization. Um, this is from Kindeco. I don't know if anyone knows Kindeco. Uh, they're one of the largest kind of workplace room management software platforms uh, globally. Um, and what they're seeing is that in the workspaces that they're managing with their software, that desk utilization is only 34%, meeting room utilization is only 36%, and breakout room utilization is 44%. What's happening is as companies are getting smarter around utilization, what they're finding is that their spaces are actually massively underutilized. And when you think about the opportunity cost of your space, does anyone know what, it, what, a, what the occupancy cost for a workstation in a Class A building in New York City is right now for a company? And that's not just the cost of physical real estate, it's the cost of turnkeying a workplace experience in a seat. It's $23,000 a year. I could buy that same experience from Convene or WeWork for ten dollars to $12,000 today. So not only am I getting a better experience and flexibility and agility, but I'm saving 50% of my true underlying occupancy cost. Prediction number five, the average commercial lease term will approach one year. We envision a future where space will actually start to be consumed by the minute, by the hour, especially as infrastructure like Convene starts to get pre-baked into the office building, whereas new tenants that are moving into a building are going to design their physical space and infrastructure around the fact that landlords and companies like Convene have already built this infrastructure internally. And that's why we feel so strongly that lease terms will continue to compress. Right now, the average lease term in the United States is 7.3 years. That's down from 10 years, not even a decade ago. It just so happens that the average life expectancy of a company birthed to death in the United States is 7.2 years. Uh, and what we like to say is in a world of complexity, the only way to fight it is through speed and agility. And what we say is that agility is actually the new efficiency. Um, and the stat here that really always sticks out to me is that 52% of the Fortune 500 companies that were on the list in 2000 are no longer there. So I would encourage everyone in this room uh, that we live in a world where it will never move this slow again. Um, most of the people in this room are disrupting the industry or creating new and emerging technologies or services that are really fundamentally changing the industry. We can't do enough of that. Um, and I'll leave you with a great proverb which says, uh, when the winds of change blow, some build walls and other build windmills. I think it's incumbent on us as an industry uh, to build windmills. Thank you. <laughs>